Hi everyone, welcome back to the official Owen Corporation YouTube page. This history video is going to be a bit different. Normally I show the history of companies by using idents or commercials, but this time I will talk about the history of this public transit system. The system we will be discussing today is Government of Ontario Transit, better known as Go Transit. But first, let's get to know about the system. Go Transit is a regional public transit system serving the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area in Canada with two transportation methods, commuter rail and intercity bus service. The service transports over 70 million passengers per year. As of 2020, Go Transit's fleet consists of 88 locomotives, 656 rail cars, and 401 buses. But how did all of this begin? We're going to find out, so let's go back to the year 1962. Immigration to southern Ontario at the time was growing rapidly, but more people meant more cars, and more cars meant more demand on congested highways around the GTA or Greater Toronto area. Much of the area's commuter service was provided by the Canadian National Railway, which faced growing pressure to expand its service beyond Lakeshore trains that ran between Hamilton in the west and Danforth in the east to Toronto. However, CN lacked the financial and physical capital to do this. The Ontario government needed a better way to get commuters out of their cars. This launched a comprehensive transportation study of the GTA, the first of its kind in Canada. In May of 1965, the Ontario government gave the go-ahead to launch Canada's first specially designed commuter rail service, costing $9.2 million, which is equivalent to $73.1 million today. The plan would include 14 stations stretching 84 kilometers along the Lake Ontario shoreline. Prior to opening, the logo for Go Transit was created. The design was created by Gagnon Valkus Incorporated, a Montreal-based design firm that also created the logos of Canadian National and Hydro-Quebec. The logo shows two green wheels forming the letters G and O with the T lying on its side. They stand for Government of Ontario Transit. On May 23, 1967, Ontario's very first interregional rail transit system opened to the public. At the time, Go Transit's fleet consisted of eight GP40TC locomotives built by Electromotive Division, or EMD, as well as 32 RTC85 passenger cars built by Hawker Siddeley Canada. The inaugural Go train was number 946 and left Oakville at 5.50 a.m. heading eastbound to Toronto. The Ontario government's Go Transit began operation along a 62-mile route from Hamilton to Pickering and in the morning rush hours carried a total of 2,400 passengers. The train I rode on this morning hit a top speed of 60 miles an hour, but some of them did, in a stretch, get up to 80. Premier O'Barts hinted that the GO service of 50 trains daily will be in operation sooner than expected, possibly in June. As time goes on, it will be extended. Less than 40 minutes after leaving Oakville, the first GO train roared into Union Station. The first day has to be termed a roaring success, and best of all, there was no cost. But that won't happen again. At first, GO Transit was supposed to be a three-year experiment, but GO proved itself much sooner by meeting its projected second-year passenger volume in just six months. These GO Fair tickets were unique in design and function. They were color-coded to identify origin and destination stations. Customers would insert the ticket into the fare box. At the time, a one-way fare between Oakville and Toronto Union Station was just 95 cents. The Lakeshore GO trains carried 2.5 million passengers in 1967 alone, making it a success. Over the next couple of years, all-day GO service ran from Oakville to Pickering with limited rush hour service to Hamilton. In September of 1970, GO Transit started its bus service, with its first bus being known as the THH-5305A, built by General Motors Division. GO Transit ordered 20 of these buses, numbering them from 1000 to 1019. The bus service would link Oshawa and Hamilton, as well as Newmarket to Toronto. In 1973, Go Transit launched its Dial-Up Bus Service, which was an on-demand mini-bus service to provide door-to-door -door service for commuters between their homes and their select destinations. Dial-Up Bus, a concept pioneered by Go Transit in 1970, works by dividing a neighborhood into zones. People who phone the central dispatch office one hour before they wish to travel are picked up at their door by modern, brightly colored buses. For a fare of 35 cents, passengers will be dropped off anywhere they wish within their zone or taken to the city center where they may transfer to another bus. It's kind of like Uber and Lyft except you're in a small bus with some other commuters. The dial-up bus service ran six days a week. However, in 1976, dial-up bus was discontinued due to lack of ridership. Between 1973 and 1982, 
Go acquired some FP7 locomotives from Ontario Northland and the Milwaukee Railroad and renumbered them from 900 to 911. As demand for GO bus services grew, so did its fleet. To meet this demand, GO launched some new services including bus service to be timed with the arrival of GO trains at stations, making connections faster and easier. They also introduced Richmond Hill to Toronto GO bus services. GO also proposed its GO ALRT system or the Government of Ontario Advanced Light Rail Transit. This concept centered around a network of high-speed driverless electric trains operating as fast as subway trains. Although it never came to be, it made way for future projects. On April 27, 1974, GO Transit introduced its Georgetown Line, which later became known as the Kitchener Line after an extension to Kitchener Station on December 19, 2011. A tragic wreck occurred prior to Christmas on December 12, 1975. A westbound GO train collided with the TTC bus containing 50 passengers after the bus stalled at a railroad crossing. It happened at 4.45 p.m. Nine people were killed and 20 more were injured, becoming the deadliest transit disaster in Toronto. Despite the incident, GO Transit continued to provide service for commuters around the GTA. On March 13, 1978, GO Transit presented its first bi-level coaches, which were also built by Hawker Siddeley Canada. They had a seating capacity of 162 passengers, which was 70% more than their old RTC-85 coaches. Later, GO Transit sold their RTC-85 coaches to Ontario Northland and AMT in Montreal. Cap car number 104 is currently preserved at the Toronto Railway Museum in downtown Toronto. In the same year, GO Transit ordered six F40PH locomotives from General Motors Division. On April 29, 1978, GO Transit introduced its Richmond Hill Line. These train lines were previously used for CN passenger service. Into the 1980s, expansion of the GO train continued with the launch of the Milton Line on October 25, 1981, using rail lines that the Canadian Pacific Railway had been using for passenger service until 1971. GO also launched the Bradford and Stouffville lines nearly a year later on September 2, 1982. In May of 1982, GO Transit celebrated 15 years of service. At the time, the average weekly GO bus ridership was over 30,000 passengers. The next year, a brand new bus terminal in Newmarket opened its doors. GO celebrated its 20th anniversary in 1987, and they made a special souvenir pass. To keep people moving, GO switched to a proof-of-payment fare system in 1988. Passengers who weren't using a monthly pass validated their tickets at machines in the stations instead of lining up to have their tickets inspected on the way out. In the same year, GO Transit worked together with EMD to develop the F59PH. GO purchased 49 of the locomotives between 1988 and 1994 to replace most of their aging diesel locomotives on their fleet. They were numbered 520 to 568. This officially retired all of GO's FP7 locomotives. The majority of the units were scrapped, but a few of them were sold to other commuter railways. One of them was number 904. A commuter rail in Miami, Florida, known as Tri-Rail, purchased it, as well as GO GP40-2W703. They were both retired in 1995. 703 was bought by another railroad, while 904 was purchased by the Florida Gulf Coast Railroad Museum, where it is preserved today. Meanwhile, back in Toronto, GO Transit's remaining GP40 TCs and F40s were sold to Amtrak in 1990. The GP40s then became known as the GP38H-3. Between 1986 and 1991, GO Transit ordered 69 new 102A2 buses built by Motor Coach Industries. They were numbered 1400 to 1468. GO also extended a rush hour train service to Barrie, Guelph, Acton, and Oshawa in 1990. In the same year, GO introduced off-peak train service on the Milton Line. In 1991, Unionville GO Station officially opened on the Stouffville Line. Since the 1960s, Unionville had been developing at a rapid pace and had come to rely heavily on GO services. In 1993, GO Transit presented its mascot, the GO Bear. On June 1, 1995, 10 GO stations became wheelchair accessible, them being Oakville, Milton, Aurora, Richmond Hill, Old Comer, Stouffville, Unionville, Pickering, Oshawa, and Union. Into the new millennium, GO continued upgrading and improving its fleet of trains and buses. On June 7, 2000, GO Transit gained ownership and control of all the tracks in Union Station and the CP Express building. GO would convert it into a new GO bus terminal. 
Go Transit also broke ridership records by carrying its 40 millionth passenger in 2000 alone. After the conversion of the CP Express building on March 3, 2003, all Union Station Go buses moved to the new terminal. On April 9, 2004, Go Transit introduced new automated ticket vending machines. Passengers could buy one-way tickets and same-day return fares with cash, debit, or credit. On August 15, 2005, Go Transit launched eNews, a customizable subscription service to help keep passengers updated on the Go services they use. Today, it's known as On the Go Alerts. In 2006, Go Transit celebrated its 1 billionth passenger. Two years later, all of the GO buses were equipped with bike racks. In addition to this, GO Transit introduced its first double-decker buses to its fleet, being known as the Enviro 500, built by Alexander Dennis. At the time, double-decker buses were rare in North America. GO ordered 105 of these buses, numbering them from 8101 to 8205. Around this time as well, GO Transit's F59PH locomotives were starting to show their age. Go took delivery of 48 new MP40PH-3C locomotives built by Motive Power Inc. over a four-year transition program from 2008 to 2011. These units replaced the majority of their F59PH locomotives. A few of them were scrapped, but many were sold to commuter rails like NC Dot, AMT, and Chicago Metra. Go's remaining F59s, numbering 557 to 564, were rebuilt in 2011 and continue to operate today. On May 14, 2009, Go Transit officially merged with Metrolinx. With more than 40 years of experience building and delivering transit at the time, Go would play a critical role in helping Metrolinx integrate and coordinate transportation for millions of commuters in the GTA. They also adopted Metrolinx's new Presto Card. This electronic fare card let riders tap and go across Go Transit and nine other transit systems in the Greater Toronto and Hamilton areas. In 2013, Go Transit was the winner of the Outstanding Public Transportation System Achievement Award. It honored Go's customer service, safety, operations, and more. Also in 2013, Go adjusted its logo and started repainting their entire fleet using new Metrolinx colors, that being two different tones of greens. Go also introduced all-day service on the Lakeshore lines. In 2014, Go Transit's mascot, Go Bear, got a makeover. Cuter and more cuddly, he was a big hit with passengers and Blue Jays fans alike. On June 6, 2015, Metrolinx introduced the Union Pearson Express, which provided service from Union Station to Toronto Pearson International Airport in 25 minutes. The route is shared with Go Transit's Kitchener Line and makes two stops at Bluer and Western stations along the way. During this time as well, one of Go's MP40s, number 647, was sent back to Motive Power Inc. in Boise, Idaho to convert it into what would become known as the MP54AC. The process was done by replacing its EMD 710G3B diesel engine with a Cummins QSK60 engine. In 2016, Go Transit launched its funny and award-winning etiquette advertising campaign, Hashtag Etiquette Fail. For the comfort of your fellow passengers, please keep personal belongings to one seat. We also ask that you do not put your feet on the seats, especially if the seat is occupied by someone else. Starting in 2017, GO took delivery of more MP54 locomotives numbering 667 to 682. So there you have it, the history of Government of Ontario Transit. So what does the future hold for GO? Since the merger in 2009, Metrolinx has steadily increased GO Transit service. Over the next decade, GO will double the number of train trips during rush hour and quadrupling the number of train trips outside of rush hour and on weekends. Metrolinx is also undergoing a big project to electrify some of GO Transit's lines and the Union Pearson Express. GO will modernize and build some new stations as well and provide more bus service. So the future looks pretty big and bright for GO Transit. GO Transit system has been transporting passengers throughout the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area for over 50 years. Ontario really wouldn't feel like a Canadian province anymore if it weren't for GO Transit. As more people move into the GTA every day, GO will keep expanding its service throughout the area. I can't wait to see what's in store for GO in the next 50 years. Thank you guys for watching, and thanks to everyone who provided information and media files to help me make this video. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to get the latest updates of new ONYT videos. I'll see you next time for another video. Goodbye!